So in this video, we're going to be making a full width navigation menu. So if I go and click on this button over here, here's that full width navigation menu. And the cool thing about it is if you hover over any of these items, the image and the background changes when you hover over it. Very cool feature. And I'm going to show you how to do this in Elemental. Now, if you're in a hurry and you want a complete template, that's very easy to do. There's going to be a link in the description of this video. And it's going to take you to this page on my website. You can go and download it. So once you've downloaded it, then all you have to do is extract the contents. And inside, this is going to be the JSON template file that you can import into Elementor. And let me show you how to do that really quickly. So inside your WordPress backend, you'd go over to templates, you'd go into the theme builder. Here in the theme builder, you can go into headers and you can say add new. Once the Elementor page builder has loaded up, we're going to click on this import templates icon. Then all you have to do is click and drag this file into this window and let go. Here it's going to give you this warning. It's pretty standard for all templates. Let's say continue. And that template you just imported, it's going to be in the my template section. It'll be this one over here, how to create a stunning full width menu. And you just say insert. And then one of the final things is you just have to click on publish. You can save for the entire site and then just say save and close. Then you'll have the full template of this tutorial. But for those of you who want to know how to actually build it yourselves, we're going to go and do that right now. So here in the header theme builder, we're going to start off with our first container. Now, if you don't have your navigation window over here open, it's going to be this icon over here. We are going to need it and we're going to need it quite a lot because this is going to take a lot of code. So the first container we're going to need is going to be this two column one over here. We're going to click on that. The settings for this container is the min height. We're going to put this to 90. The direction we're going to keep the same. The line items we're going to put center. The column gap, we're going to make sure that it's zero. And then under style, we're going to give this a background color of white. And then under advanced, if we go to motion effects, we're going to make this sticky to the top. If you don't want this sticky to the top, then you don't have to put this piece in. Now on the right hand side, I'm going to change the name of this container to header. We are going to have to rename pretty much a lot of the things over here so that it's easier to edit later. Now if we open up this header container, we've got these two inner ones right over here. And I'm going to rename these as well. So this first one, I'm going to say it's the icon container. And the second one, I'm going to say it's the menu icon container. So what we're going to need to put into these containers is going to be the site logo on the left hand side. So let's go get that now. Click the plus sign, the site logo, click and drag it and let go. Okay, so now obviously the site logo is too big. So we're going to go to style. For the width, I'm going to change this to pixels and I'm going to say 70. So now that we have the site logo in place in this container, let's go and change a couple of settings of this icon container. So under layout, if we scroll down, I want this to be on the left hand side. So I'm going to click align items to the left. I'm going to make sure the gaps are zero. And I think that's looking pretty good there already. Now for the right hand side, we're going to make the menu icon. Now currently there isn't a very good icon available to make that whole hamburger menu. So what we're going to do is going to make our own. It's very easy to do. We're just going to use a divider widget. So the first thing we're going to need in this container is going to be another container. So you click on this icon over here and we just take the container and we put it in. Then for the settings of this inner container, I'm going to say the width is going to be pixels and I'm going to say it's 30. Then if we come down to gaps, I'm going to unlink this and then the column can be zero and the row is going to be five pixels. Then one of the final things you have to do this container is if we go to advanced, the padding, we're going to put this to zero and we're going to give a class name. Now in the description of this video, there's also going to be a reference page for this tutorial. It's going to be on my website. If we go look at that page right now, here's that page. This video right over here is going to change because I haven't made this video yet. So obviously I can't put the link. Um, but if you scroll down, here's going to be all the class names that we're going to be using and then all the code is underneath that. So the class name we're going to need is this very first one of reboot menu open. Just copy that go into the editor here under classes and we can just paste that there. Okay, so now we have that done. We're going to go and add three dividers to this container. So we click on the plus sign. We look for the divider, take that and we put it in there. And then from there, we're just going to edit the settings of this one and then we'll just duplicate it to make that whole hamburger menu. Okay, so for the settings, this looks good over here, solid and the width is going to be 100%. We go over to style, we make sure that the weight is one and the color is black. Then for the gap over here, we're going to set this to zero. So now if we click on this divider here in this window and we duplicate it, there you can see there's the three and it's starting to look like that hamburger menu. Now, all we have to do is go up to the menu icon container and then the align items over here under layout, we're going to put this to the end. 
So now you can see it's sitting at the end over there. And that's pretty much our whole header done. So now we're just gonna make sure it's fine for all different screen sizes. If we go into tablet, that looks fine over there. And if we go into mobile, you can see that that does not look fine. So to fix that, what we're gonna do is make sure we're on the icon container. And then the width over here, we're gonna change it to percentage and we're just gonna say 50. And then we'll do the same for this menu icon container. We change it to pixels and we say 50. Then this container over here that we haven't actually renamed. In the settings here, we're gonna change, we make sure this is in pixels and we're just gonna say that this is 30. So now you see it's looking a lot better on mobile. So now if we go back into desktop view, let's go and build out that whole menu. What we're gonna need is our first main container. So click on this plus sign, flexbox, this one right over here. And for the settings of this, we're gonna change the content width to full width. Gonna make sure it's at 100%. The min height, we're gonna change this to VH and we're gonna say that this is 100. The direction of these, we want it horizontally because we want the menu and then also the images. The gaps over here, if it's anything like that, we'll just make sure that's gonna be a zero. So now if we go into style, we don't need a background color for the actual menu, but it would be helpful while we're building it. The only thing is you have to remember to take this out when the menu is finished. But for now, let's just go and add one color here. It doesn't matter what it is at all, because we're going to need to see the item. So that's why we're adding this color. So I'm just gonna choose this random gray. It really doesn't matter what it is. So once we're done with that, we're gonna go over to advanced. The padding, we're gonna make sure that this is zero. And we scroll down and the position, we're gonna change this. So now this is going to be fixed. We're gonna make sure that the zeros are there. And then the Z index, we are gonna give this a hundred to make sure that it's above everything else. Now here, we're gonna need a class name. So if we go to a resource page, it's gonna be this reboot image menu. We're gonna copy this and we're gonna paste that right here. Okay, so now we've done all that, let's just change the name of this container right here. For this, I'm just gonna call it menu. And in this menu, we're gonna add three containers to it. So click on this plus sign, take the container, let go. Once it's inside, we can just duplicate it two more times. This first one, we're gonna change the name. Then it's gonna be menu items list. And then the second one is going to be the image list. And then the third one is the close container. So we're gonna say close container. So now that we've got three containers, let's go to this menu items list container. We're gonna make sure that this is full width and the percentage, we're gonna say that this is going to be 50. Direction, we're making sure that it's gonna be going down. We want everything center justified and align items to the center and the gaps are going to be zero on this as well. Now if we go to advanced under padding we're going to give everything five and we are also going to give this a CSS class name. So if we go into that reference page it's going to be the third one of reboot menu left copy that put that right in over here and that's everything we need to do for this container now in this container we're going to be putting in the icon list and the HTML widget so click on this plus sign for the icon list we're going to take this put it in there and then we'll just go get the HTML widget. Find that and we can put it above the icon list. So this is how it looks like. So there's the menu items list, which is this container and this is the HTML and then icon list. So let's click on this list container and we're gonna change things over here. So these items, the first two are gonna take out cause you're gonna go stylize them. Now we're left with this first one, we can click that. The icon we can remove. So for the name of this, I'm gonna say that this is home. And then the link, obviously you'd be putting the link to the base of your website or whatever page that it's actually linking to. So if this is gonna be the home page, then we can click on dynamic tags and we just say site URL. So now that we've got that, we can close this and now we can duplicate it for as many pages as we like. So for this tutorial, I'm gonna have six. So I'm gonna duplicate this five more times. There we go. Now I have six over here and now we just have to change the names and links for these other items. This one, I'm gonna say it's about. Obviously we put our link there. Next one, I'm gonna say service, then put the link. This next one, I'm gonna say portfolio link. This next one is team. And then this last one is contact. Okay, so now that we have our list, Let's go and stylize this a bit. So if we go to style, the space between, we're gonna make sure it's pixels and we're gonna set 40. The icon, we don't have to worry about anything because there is no icon. Now, if we go to text, we're gonna go and change a couple of things over here. The very first thing is this color. I'm gonna say that this is gonna be a white, but I'm not gonna keep the transparency here because I actually want it to be a bit transparent. So when we hover over everything, it does that whole highlighting glow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this RGBA so that now I can see the percentages. 
and I'm just going to drag this down to 0.5. Now we're happy with that. Now we can close that and let's go change the topography. So here, because later, so I'm going to put the size to about a 48. The weight I'm going to put maybe at about a 600. And then the line height, I'm going to change this to EM and I'm just going to say one. Then while we're here, I'm going to change, I'm going to click on this icon for desktop. I'm going to go to tablet. For tablets, I'm going to say that this is a 30. And then for mobile, I'm going to say that this is about a 27. Okay, so now we've taken care of all of that. I'm just going to switch this back to desktop and let's carry on so so the next thing we have to do is nothing to do with this list icon we don't have to go to advanced and add anything so we are going to go to this next container of the image list now for the settings of this for the content width we're going to say full width the width itself is as in percentages and we're going to say that this is 50 the direction we're also going to make sure it is going vertical so for the style of this actual container we don't actually have to do anything so we can go over to advanced and the padding, we're gonna set this to zero. Now we're gonna need a class name for this as well. So in that reference page, it's this reboot menu right. I'm gonna copy that and we're gonna paste it right here. Now that we're done with all the settings of this middle container, what we're gonna add in here is the spacer widget and not the actual image widget. There's a reason for that. It just works really better with the spacer widget. Something else that's really cool, that spacer widget not only is going to have the image, but it's also going to control this background color over here as we hover over these different items. So now it has a nice dual purpose effect going there. In Elementor, what we're going to do is click on a plus sign. We're going to look for the spacer, click and drag it into this middle container and let go. Now this one, we can duplicate it for as many menu items as we need. So if you have three menu links, then you only need three. If you have eight, you're gonna have eight because these are gonna represent every image and color of every link. But first, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do the settings of this first one. Then we can just duplicate it to our needs. So for the settings of the spacer, we're gonna change this to VH and we're gonna set this to 100. So this is gonna represent the image, remember? So now we're just going to go to advanced now. If we scroll down, we are going to change the position to absolute. We can leave all these settings like this as is. And if we go down to background, this is where we're going to set our colors and we're going to set the image. So we're going to click on this classic. Now we can go and choose whatever image we need. I'm going to go with this one over here, say insert. And then here in the color, I can set the color for the background. So I'm going to go with this type of tanny brown color over there. Then for the settings over here for the actual image, I'm going to say the position is center center. The attachment can stay default. It's fine. The repeat, it doesn't really matter. And then the display size, we want this to cover. Okay, cool. So that is all the settings that we're going to need for this spacer. So now we can duplicate it. So now we can duplicate it five more times because I have six different menu items over here. So on the right hand side, they say duplicate three, four, five, and six. Okay. So now I have my six. So now I can click on the second spacer, which represents the second link. So this one, the settings are the same. All we have to do is change the background and color. So advanced, background, choose an image, go with this ocean one here, insert, and change the color to maybe a darker blue. There we go. And now we just have to do this for all of these spaces. So we go to the third one, advanced, background, change image, go with the mountains, say select, and then change the color. I'll go with a lighter blue, maybe something like that. Go to the fourth, advanced, backgrounds, change the image, say this country one, put it in, change the color to something, say like that. Fifth, same story, background change, go with this ocean one over here, say insert. This one I can put, this is go with some sort of green. And then the last one, again, same thing, go with this other ocean one right there and change the background color. These background colors, you don't want too bright. It might go against the color of the actual menu items. Okay, we are almost there. So now it's the last container that we have to worry about and that is this closed container. For the settings of this, we're gonna say it's full width we're going to change the width to pixels so this is going to be the close button so we're going to say that this is 45 the height is going to be 45 and we're going to say that everything is center the gaps are zero then under style we're going to give this a color of white and we go down to border and we're gonna make this round. So it's going to be 100 of a border radius. And then we're gonna head over to advanced. We don't have to change most of the stuff here, but we need to change the position. So we're gonna change this to absolute. Now, if we scroll down a bit, these things over here, the horizontal orientation, we're gonna put it to the right. Okay, so now that it's absolute, what we're gonna do is gonna change the horizontal to a 35 pixels and the vertical, we're gonna shoot it, put it the same as 35. Now. Under the CSS classes, we need to get that other class name. So we go to that reference page, this last class name over here, it's the reboot menu close, 
copy that and we put that in here. So now what we're going to be putting in this container is going to be two more dividers. This is going to be the X that we're going to go and create. Again, there isn't actually a really nice icon, so we can just go and make this quickly with dividers. So we're going to click on this plus sign, we're going to look for the divider, and we're going to put it into the container. For the settings of this, it's very similar to the other one, so we make sure it's solid 100%. Then under style, we make sure it's one pixel, the gap is going to be zero, and we're pretty much good to go there. So now that we have that, we're going to duplicate it one more time, and now we're going to make it as an X. We're going to click on the first one again, and under advanced we're going to scroll down and we're going to say transform now under this rotate we're going to click on that and we're going to give this a 45 degree angle and then that's all we have to worry about that one if we click on the second one we do the same thing we go to advanced we go to transform and under rotate we say minus 45 and there's our x okay so now we're done constructing this whole thing now it's time to put all the code that's going to make this just pop. In the reference page, we're going to go and do this, that. We're going to go and fetch the code. So this very first piece of code, this is for the main container. And you can see that it says main container. We're going to copy this. We're going to go into the editor. And where we're going to put this is if we go to this menu container, not the one of the header, but the actual menu, go to advanced, we go down to custom CSS, and we just paste it in there. Okay. Then we go back to the reference page. We scroll down to the next one. We're going to copy this one right over here. This is for the menu list container. So we copy that. And then this menu items list, we go there, advanced, custom CSS, and paste it there. And we do the same thing over and over. So third code. So the icon list widget. We're going to take this code, copy it back in the editor, look for the icon list widget, advanced, and we paste this here. Back on the reference page, we scroll down a little bit more. We're going to copy this next code. We say copy. We go back into the editor and for this image list right over here this is that reboot menu right so we just go right down to custom css and we paste it right there once again we go to reference page scroll a little bit more almost there this is for the html widget so now this is going to copy go back we're going to look for the html widget which was with the icon list and we paste this right here Okay, so now we put it in the code. There's one last thing that I just need to do. So this works nicely in mobile. I actually forgot about it. So for the closed container, if we switch this over to mobile, for the settings of this, this container width, we have to make sure it's in pixels. I'm going to say that this is 45. Now everything else can stay pretty much the same there. And if we go to advanced, these absolute settings, we're going to need to change as well. So this is going to be a 10 for the horizontal and a 25 for the vertical. So now if we go and click this icon before we even have to publish, you can see that it's sitting right over there. If we didn't do that, it was going to look funny. But now you can see how this is actually looking in mobile. If you don't want these colors, you can go and customize them. It's very easy to do. You can go to the icon list in advanced the custom CSS we had put in. The very first three lines is the ones that you can just worry about. This is the hover color for desktop, which is set to white. So if you want to change it to black or something else like that, you can do that. And then the mobile colors. So there it's set to black, like you can see there. And then the background color, you can set it as well. So if you don't want it as white, you can change it to whatever you want. So if the background and the text don't conflict, you can even put this to transparent and you don't even have to have a background color. So it's completely up to you. All the choices are there. Again, it's in the icon list in the custom CSS. It's the very first three lines. So, But now that's all sorted. All you have to do is click on publish. Here in the display conditions, we make sure it's for the entire site and we can just say save and close. So if you go and preview this, there it is in the front end. Obviously this is just a preview of a header. And if you click it, you can see it's working perfectly. All the colors are working, everything is fine. If we go look at this in the mobile view properly, so you can see that it's working nice there as well. And there we go. I hope you liked this video. If you did, smash that like button. And if you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing as well. That stuff makes a big difference to a small channel like mine. If you have any suggestions or anything, then just put a comment down below. Let me see what I can do. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.